think market volatility is being driven by a number of factors. The first one, obviously, is the geopolitical situation in Europe with Russia's invasion of Ukraine. In a more underlying sense, though, we can think back to the pivot by developed market central banks that has occurred over the last few months in terms of their policy priorities and how they're thinking about inflation. In addition, the third theme that's been around for a little bit longer, of course, is the pandemic, which has really impacted behavior and markets. So geopolitics, policy, pandemic would be the three sources of relatively heightened volatility at the moment. In the grand sweep of history, if you go back and you include some of the big volatility events, 2008 with the global financial crisis or March 2020, with the onset of the pandemic in North America, volatility in financial markets was much, much higher, at least for a time, than we're currently witnessing. So I would characterize volatility in the markets at the moment as elevated, certainly not exceptional on the high side. I think the most likely case is that volatility stays a little bit elevated relative to what we're used to on average over the last several years. So there's a number of reasons. One, if you look at the history of geopolitical events from the perspective of their impact on financial markets, tends to be relatively short-lived. That source of volatility might be around for several weeks yet, even perhaps a couple of months. But after that, that source of volatility wanes. More relevant is the policy source of risk and volatility. So two aspects there. One, clearly the um, pivot to trying to bring inflation back down to more tolerable rates is generating volatility. And I think that that battle between inflation and central banks is going to last for a little bit longer yet. So that means that that source of inflation will last for a little bit longer. Since the onset of the pandemic in North America in March 2020, central banks bought a huge volume of assets. And that buying really dampened down market volatility. As part of their efforts to get inflation firmly under control, they will be, first of all, reducing the extent of their asset purchases and then actually selling off uh, the assets on their balance sheets. And so that will almost be a reverse impact. So whereas the purchases dampened market volatility, that dampening impact won't be as strong. That in itself will lead to a little bit higher volatility on average. When thinking about periods of volatility, our best counsel is to, as best one can, look through them, continue to focus on long-term fundamentals, ensure that your portfolio is set up to be consistent with your long-term goals and objectives, because it's very easy to uh, get swept up in the current spike in volatility, the current event risk that is driving that spike. But oftentimes those spikes are relatively short-lived. And then afterwards, what we're left with is a re-engagement with long-term fundamentals. So I think best counsel is to, wherever possible, look through the short term, focus on those long-term fundamentals.